I don't know, Doc. It, it just feels like every time the holidays come around, I get less and less excited for it. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to cry because I couldn't fall asleep on Christmas Eve because I was so excited for Christmas. And nowadays, I wouldn't even mind sleeping in on Christmas. It just... It just feels like when I was younger, everything about Christmas was so great to me. Like, seeing all the presents under the Christmas tree, wondering what was in all of them, or visiting with family I never got to see much, laughing, joking around, playing games, eating delicious food while everyone sits around the table catching up like they had just spoken yesterday. I don't know what's changed. Is it because I'm older? Maybe it's because I've lost the innocence I've once had as a child and I'm unable to see Christmas the way I once did. Or maybe... Maybe Christmas doesn't mean as much to me as it did when I was a kid. What do you think, Doc? Hell if I know! I'm only a figment of your imagination that you conjured up to help you solve your issues with the holidays, so none of this is real. Heck, even this background isn't real. Huh. Well, now I feel even worse. Well, even if this was all fake, my holiday depression is still very real. You know, I kind of wish I was a kid again. Just so I could experience the magic of Christmas the way I used to. Like, waking up and playing on an NES or the Super Nintendo after my brothers got some... New... That's it! I know how to make myself feel better! With a nostalgia trip! Okay, I just need to quickly get everything together in time for the holiday so I can make a Christmas video. Oh, for the love of... Actually, I'm not even surprised at myself anymore. This has been going on for the past year. But you know what? No longer! From this day forward, my New Year's resolution will be to make a video every week until I feel like not making videos anymore. Starting now. Hey everyone, Johnny Boy here, and I know it's well after New Year's, but I'm going to talk a little bit about Christmas. Christmas has always been my favorite holiday ever since I was little. On Christmas mornings, I would run to the Christmas tree and get toys while my brothers got these magical cartridges we know to be video games. Now, even though nowadays I consider myself to be a gaming expert, I owe most of what I know and love to my two older brothers because by the time I could comprehend how cool video games were, the Nintendo 64 was out, which had meant that I already missed out on two generations of gaming goodness. So every time Christmas rolled around, while my brothers were enjoying the new fruits of the gaming world, I was playing the classics. And I wasn't just playing the classics because my brothers wouldn't let me play the newest games, and even when they did let me play, I had to be player too. You know, when they hand you a controller that's not even plugged in, and when you go crazy with the button pressing, they say, Wow, look how good you're doing, so you'll think you're playing the game with them, so you'll leave them alone. No, I played the classics because not only were these games new and exciting to me, but because over the years my brothers had handpicked some of the best games of the previous two generations. Games like Mega Man X, Super Metroid, Mario RPG, or even Chrono Trigger, and that's just to name a few. So instead of talking about winter or holiday themed games, I thought I would relive some of my fondest memories of both Christmas and my childhood and talk about my 10 favorite NES games that I played as a child. Kung Fu had to be the very first NES game that I've ever played. Heck, maybe it's a lot of people's first games that they've ever played. It just seems like one of those games you would see bundled with the console so that it actually gets sold and not end up in a shop and save clearance bin. But I'm not bashing it or anything, this game is still fun and simplistic even to this day. You have your high kicks, your low kicks, your high punch, your nut punch, and you even have your generic martial arts enemies in this game. You got your judo dudes, dudes with knives, snakes, dragons, pot, disco, and finally, my personal favorite, Kung Fu Midgets. Okay, this game's a little weird. Ah, 
How many of you remember the old Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers cartoon that came on Disney Channel? Well, uh, yeah, they made a game about it and it's ridiculously hard. Or maybe I just suck. But I remember me and my younger sister playing this game a lot, and I don't think we ever got any farther in the first stage. Heck, even now I can't even get farther in the first stage. But, again, probably because I suck. But all in all, this game was still fun enough for me and her to keep playing it, and even now I still have fun with it. Well, everything except for the text noise in this game. OH MY GOD, MY ear! Okay, so let me start off by saying that this game is apparently based off of a movie called Little Nemo in Slumberland. And as a kid, I did not know that. Let me also state that this game is all kinds of messed up if you didn't have prior knowledge of this. Basically, just to sum up the mechanics of the game, you have these, uh, candies that were given to you by, uh, someone who broke into your house because some princess you've never heard of before wants you to be her playmate. And while in Slumberland, you can use these candies to, uh, feed the local non-evil looking monsters. But what do these candies do? It puts them to sleep! That thing that broke into your house basically gave you drugs. So when you finish drugging the animals, you cram your tiny little body into theirs, or even worse, dislocate their jaw King Kong style and wear them like a suit. And I don't even know where to begin on describing how weird this opening scene is. Hello Nemo, I've come to invite you to Slumberland. What? The princess has chosen you to be her playmate! What? She's even asked me to give you these special candies as a gift! What? Just eat the candy and you'll enter slumberland! When I was a kid, I loved playing on the jungle gym in my backyard. One of my favorite things to do was climb on top of it and grab a low-hanging branch and swing off of it. I felt like I was Tarzan, up until the branch wrapped around and slammed me into the tree. Then I felt more like George of the Jungle. So as a safer alternative, I started playing Bionic Commando. I don't think I ever actually beat it, mostly because all I cared about was swinging around from the grappling hook, which usually ended in my eminent death. And... that's about it. I'm gonna go swing on the grappling hook some more. You can go. Now, if you see my Mighty Number no. 9 video, then you would know that I'm a big fan of Mega Man, and I owe it all to my oldest brother's collection of every single Mega Man NES game. Now, some of you may be wondering why Mega Man 5 specifically is my favorite. Well, it has charge shots, sliding, rush, and a bunch of other goodies. But if I'm going to be completely honest with myself, it's probably because Charge Man's in it. And at the time of my first playthrough, I liked both Trains and Thomas the Tank Engine. So, I guess it felt like I was fighting Thomas whenever I played. You like angels? You like shooting, death dancing around, and killer mustache noses? Me too. That's it. That that's literally why I like this game. End of discussion. This game is torture. So why do I love it? Because ninjas, of course. You get to do flips and swing swords and climb on walls and get beaten up by cheetah men. get beat up by black boxers in the middle of the street for no reason even though you're just minding your own freaking business what's not to love right 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 okay Around the time I started playing NES games, another game on the Nintendo 64 had quickly become something I would try and play as much as possible, and that was Star Fox 64. But whenever I was unable to play that, I would play Bucky O'Hare. It was like a mix between Mega Man and Star Fox with planetary exploration that had hard as balls platforming and even the classic, you make one wrong move in this straight drop to the bottom stage and you're going to have to replay it over and over 
and over for half an hour! Not only that, but much like Star Fox, it has its own lovable animal crew, such as Rancid Rabbit, Crystal from Star Fox, Peabody, Daffy Duck, Edward Bighead as the villain, and Velma. Yeah, I sure had some good times playing this game, except when I died, which was all the time. You know, come to think of it, this game sucks. You know, every kid had their dream job when they were younger. Some wanted to be doctors, others wanted to be astronauts, but a lot of kids wanted to be cowboys. Not me, though. I think I wanted to be an ice cream man or something like that. But a cowboy was my second option, and Gunsmoke set the mood perfectly. Guns, horses, Indians, dying after you get shot. It was just like real life. Although one thing did kind of bother me besides the soul-crushing difficulty, and that was the first boss. The first stage is like the ending to all western movies. You're in the middle of the road between the saloon, the general store, the barbershop, and other western businesses getting ready to challenge another cowboy to a duel. But instead of standing or taking cover to shoot me, the dude is crawling around on the ground. Like, I'm not a historian or anything, but I'm pretty sure if anyone was in the middle of the duel and the other guy randomly started crawling around on the ground, he would get shot. Also, the dude's like five feet away from the cowboy. Punch-Out! is one of those magical games when I don't care how old I am or how old the game is, I will always have fun playing it. I love everything from Doc telling me that I should subscribe to the Nintendo Fun Club to King Hippo's little walk and bock dance. Okay, maybe the only thing I don't like is frickin' Don Flamenco taunting me. I'll frickin' kill you! This game holds a special place in my heart, not only because it was the first NES game that I've ever completed, but I was the first of all my brothers to completely beat the game. Tyson at all! And I do mean Tyson and not that freaking stupid knockoff Mr. Dream. But it has been a while, maybe I should see if I still have what it takes to beat the champ. And that was my top 10 favorite NES games that I played as a child. Tell me some of your favorite games on the NES that you played as a kid in the comments below that I didn't mention. And as always, until next time, see you- Oh god no! Oh god my ear! Michael, not again! Not after Holyfield, no! Hey, did you like the video? If you like what I do and want to see more of me, like and subscribe. And if you have a suggestion for a video you want me to do, let me know in the comments below. And like I said at the beginning of the video, starting this year, I am going to make a video every week, even if it's just a small thing like an update or something like that. So I guess I'll see you then.